Nordic, uh, French people. Uh, just, uh, uh, the French people just uh, worry to help you. Ah, uh, okay. <laughs> yeah. There are no nice people. There are no nice. There are no. The, yes. the environment is not comfortable. Yes, I have heard that they don't like foreign people. <laughs> exactly. But uh, for example, in London, in London is different. Maybe exactly. they can talk. The English people could be uh, strong or rough, rough people, mm-hmm. but not really. Yeah, no, not really. Yep. Yeah, they they are. It's a it's a very different culture and. And yeah, French people are not nice with with people no. from other places. Uh-huh. Not at all. Mm-hmm. I, I have heard that a lot. But yeah, very good. And how's the jet lag? Do you feel it tired? Yes. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Don't worry. To your coffee, to your aspirins, and and enjoy your 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 return. Okay. Yeah. Very good, man. Well, okay, let's begin then. Today we have a listening practice, so everybody pay attention on the video. Um, I sent you the vocabulary last uh, these days, so you could start checking it out, and we are going to do some specific questions about that. Remember that we are focusing on literal answers, because literal answers provide specific information about it, okay? So for the ones that just uh, are going to watch the video for the first time, pay attention, right? In case of, I think, Chucho, have you seen this video? Uh, Yes, weekly this morning. (laughs) Okay, perfect, perfect. So let's watch it again, right? Take out your your vocabulary with you so you can match it and start listening to it. One, two, three. Yes. Let's go. This is one of the most popular plants in the world. It takes about three to four years to grow before producing berries, which are picked, washed, pulped, dried, and roasted to make coffee. The world consumes about 500 billion cups of it every year, and it's grown by millions of farmers across Latin America, Africa, and Asia. But there's a crisis on the horizon. This is the only area where the coffee plant can grow, and as man-made climate change warms the planet, it's shrinking. Here in Colombia, one of the biggest coffee producers in the world, the impact of that crisis can already be felt. In unos 15 años, la producción bajó enormemente. El año pasado fue una producción super bajita. Yo quedé así aterrada. Y ese cambio del clima determinado, pues, y todos estos factores que la caficultura se viene a menos. Esa cultura del cafetero va a ser un recuerdo. There are over a hundred species of the coffee plant. The vast majority occur in the wild, while a few are cultivated on a farm, two of which are by far the most common. Robusta coffee has a bitter taste and is used to make espresso and most instant coffee. Arabica coffee is the good stuff. It has a smooth and mild taste and is used for high quality coffee. Both species require specific conditions to grow, but Arabica is particularly sensitive. The plant needs temperatures between 18 and 21 degrees Celsius. Too hot and the berries won't grow correctly. Too cold and they can freeze. It also needs a specific amount of rain, preferably with a three-month dry season to flower. And crucially, it needs warm days and cool nights, so it grows best at a certain elevation. Altogether, that means Arabica grows best between these latitudes. And if you were to create a perfect place for it, it would look a lot like Colombia, specifically the Zona Cafetera, Colombia's coffee region. Toda la variedad de climas, aquí tenemos aguas, tenemos fríos, tenemos calores por el sol. The coffee farmers grow and process it all by hand here, which is why Colombian coffee has been considered the best in the world for over a century. Lo amamos porque dentro de ello nacimos, con eso nos levantaron. Quizá a mí me hicieron debajo de un palo café, yo no sé, tal vez. Soy muy enamorada del café. He incursionado en el café tostado. 
yo lo proceso, lo tuesto, lo vendo tostado, eso es todo un arte, se volvió un arte. But the zona cafetera is also where climate change is already taking a toll. Greenhouse gas emissions have warmed the region by 1.2 degrees Celsius since 1980. That's enough to push the optimal elevation for coffee higher up the mountain, leaving the plants down here to overheat and produce lower quality beans. That's what's happened here on the Via Gloria farm, which sits at a low elevation. Hemos tenido unos unos calores y unos soles insoportables que no existían ahora años. The warmer climate is also ideal for pests and fungi. Up the slope, some coffee plants at the Santa Fe farm are afflicted with a fungus called coffee rust. Es un polvillo amarillo, es un honguito que va se va secando la hojita y se caen todas como veis aquí no hay ramas no hay nada. And here at the El Oasis farm, changing weather patterns have made it hard to predict the life cycle of the coffee plant. Entonces ha cambiado en que ya no reconocemos con absoluta seguridad como se hacía antes cuándo son las lluvias, cuándo son los plenos veranos, cuándo sí es la floración. Tenemos que estar pendiente de la floración cambió y eso gracias a qué al cambio climático. Since 2013, the amount of land used to grow coffee in Colombia has fallen by more than 7%, and scientists expect things to get worse. The Zona Cafetera is projected to warm by 0.3 degrees per decade and see more extreme weather. In fact, coffee-growing regions everywhere are going to be affected. A recent study estimates that by 2050, the amount of land that can sustain coffee cultivation will be reduced by 50%. And it's not just cultivated coffee. Another study estimates that 60% of wild coffee species could be at the risk of extinction because of climate change. Some of these are used to breed more resistant varieties of Arabica, which makes them critical to sustaining coffee production. That's not only bad news for the plant, but also for those who have relied on the coffee industry for generations. In the early 20th century, Americans and Europeans were buying more and more coffee. We Americans know what we like, and we really do like coffee. Did I say like? Well, we use more than three billion pounds of coffee every year. So prices were high, and that created a boom in coffee-producing countries. Where does it all come from? Mostly from South America. So let's fly down and get the story firsthand. Colombia was the second biggest producer in the world at the time. It was mostly grown on large coffee plantations called haciendas that dated back to when Colombia was a Spanish colony. The work was done by peasants, indigenous people, and former slaves, many of whom were forced off their lands and subjected to brutal conditions. The plantations were profitable while prices were high, but in 1929, the U.S. economy crashed. Demand for coffee fell, and so did the price, bankrupting the plantations. Fearing that Colombia's entire coffee industry would vanish, the government stepped in. They purchased these large coffee fields from the owners. Many had more than a thousand hectares, about the size of 1,800 football fields. And they broke them up into small plots of about 16 hectares each before selling them to laborers. The idea was that these small farms could grow other crops alongside coffee to sustain themselves through price fluctuations. This not only saved one of Colombia's most important industries, but turned it into one dominated by smallholder farmers. <laughs> Quienes vivimos aquí, como yo que he vivido toda la vida aquí, hemos vivido bajo los influjos de los ritmos que genera la actividad económica del café. To support the industry in 1927, the government had created Feta Café, an agency that would organize and represent the farmers by negotiating fair prices and favorable deals with other countries. The most important one was in 1962, when Colombia signed the International Coffee Agreement with 69 other countries and set a price minimum for export. As coffee prices recovered, Colombia's smallholder coffee farmers started thriving. Todo el mundo aquí tenía una casa en el pueblo y una finca. Y todos teníamos que ver con el café. Recordemos que la cafecultura sostuvo económicamente el país por muchos años. Recordemos que la cafecultura tuvo haces, tuvo flota mercante gran colombiana, tuvo edificios, tuvo muchas cosas. Éramos los ricos del país y del mundo porque se manejaba un muy buen precio. By the 1970s, Colombia was using the coffee farmer, or cafetero, as a marketing tool around the world. It is here that they buy their coffee. Coffee grown by men like Juan Valdez. Because for Colombians, their coffee is more than just the richest coffee in the world. It is a national heritage. 
Today, Colombia is the world's third largest coffee exporter, and there are about 500,000 mostly small farms that make up the industry. But just as these farmers are starting to face climate change, the economics that support them are disappearing. There are several ways farmers can protect their coffee plants from the effects of climate change. Shade trees keep the plants cool and stabilize the soil. Farmers can move their crop uphill, where it's cooler. They can also switch to more resistant varieties of coffee plants. The problem is all these solutions cost money that many smallholder farmers don't have anymore. Eh, 15, 20 años para atrás, todo el mundo por aquí sembrábamos café. Sembrando el café hoy en día, lo sembramos a pérdida. It started in the 1980s when the coffee agreement fell apart along with the price minimum. Since then, more countries, especially some in Asia, have increasingly flooded the market with cheap coffee. It sparked a crisis around 2009, when extreme weather and coffee rust decimated Colombia's crop. Production fell to its lowest levels in decades. In 2013, thousands of farmers went on strike and demanded that the government provide them with more financial support and establish a reasonable price minimum. The government increased subsidies to coffee growers, but without another international coffee agreement, a return to a price minimum was no longer possible. So coffee prices continued to fluctuate. Today, it's below what many farmers need to break even. That's why it's so hard for these farmers to adapt to climate change. Para eso se necesita recursos. Además, tú tienes la tierra aquí, eso se te calentó, ya no funciona bien. ¿Qué vas a hacer? ¿Qué vas a hacer? No tienes como comprar tierra en otra parte o algo así. Estás frito. Y ahora están desesperados porque volvamos a sembrar y volvamos a tener sombrío. Pero eso, hoy por hoy, a los costos de hoy, es muy difícil para un agricultor ir sembrando estas cosas así. It's forced many farmers in the zona cafetera to replace coffee with other crops. Empecé a cultivar plátano en, en una vaina que lo, llevamos, lo llamamos aquí una, un cultivo intensivo de plátano. Entonces, eh, los cultivadores somos los que recibimos la menor remuneración. ¿cierto? Entonces, la gente se cansa. O sea, yo soy enamorada de la tierra y puedo aguantar de alguna manera, ¿cierto? Pero hay gente que tiene, tiene sus hijos, tiene otros, o sea, tiene muchas responsabilidades. And it's not just a problem in Colombia. 80% of the world's coffee is grown by 25 million smallholder farmers many living in poverty. From Central America to Africa to Asia, climate change is making it harder for them to grow coffee. Unless the price of coffee rises again and farmers have the financial means to cope with climate change, small farms everywhere will continue to be at risk of losing their livelihoods. And in the Zona Cafetera, that could spell the end of an entire culture built around coffee. Esos somos quienes hemos vivido toda la vida aquí. Y bueno, hemos tenido la oportunidad de conocer profundamente el fenómeno del café. Crisis, 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 crisis. Okay, this is the video. I hope you understood a little bit better. Let's go through the questions. There are very specific questions I want to ask you, which are one, contextual questions. The ones that you have in front are uh, some of them. What are what is robusta coffee and what's arabica coffee and how how does arabica coffee grow? Right. What are the weather conditions in which this specific seed can grow? Okay. Then we get to the um, the historic. Uh, relevant events when the crisis started how did the crisis start how did the, the Colombian government try to solve not try to try to Say the coffee industry. And then there was a, a situation in which the United States, how did 
the US government. Uh, take over farm the farmer's lands. What was the idea behind the solution after the 1920s economic crash? Okay. And at the end, we have some, some important and relevant questions about the What's the name? The um, the conclusion of the of the video. They were talking about why countries filled the market with cheap coffee and why is it so hard for farmers? to adapt to climate change. Does anybody have a, an answer to any of the new questions that you are reading in front of you? I have an answer for the last one. Great. Uh, it is so hard for them because they don't have the resources. Mm -hmm. They need money to, to start doing the option that the government uh, provide to them. Mm -hmm. But they don't have it because it is not cheaper. All the options are not cheaper for them. Yes, precisely. That's not cheap at all. Right? Cheap. Cheaper is the comparative. Uh, yes, cheap. Mm -hmm. Exactly. It's very expensive. Any of the solutions that we are that we are mentioning. What are the solutions that we that are cheap? That are not cheap. Sorry. Um, they want to plant some mm -hmm. trees mm -hmm. that help to avoid uh, the warm. Mm -hmm. Also, a uh, I forgot the other ones, but the, <clears throat> the coffee plants mm -hmm. in a higher in a high altitude. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Sure. Mm, and I don't remember the last one. Well, the the first one, the, the, the first ones that you are mentioning are, are relevant. If we are speaking about comparison, then you need a comparative high. Comparative. As. Ah, uh -uh. comparative like. for high. You know, it's. Higher. Exactly. Yes, yes. I didn't know how to give you the reference. Higher. Uh -huh. So where do you need to grow the plant? Higher. Right. And why cannot they, they cannot do that? Because they don't have money to to buy another land. Exactly. Excellent. Excellent. Very good. That was that was a, a, one of the things that we had at the end. Very good. Good. Who else have an answer to any of the questions that we have in front? Um, okay, we have three people. So let's begin with Chucho. You're gonna, you're gonna leave early. Ah, uh, Sophie, Sophie, she prefers. <laughs> <Yes. laughs> okay. Oh, okay. great. So, Sophie. Thank you, Chicho. Um, I have the answer to how does Arabica coffee grow? Well, mm -hmm. Arabica coffee is the 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 one that have a higher um quality or a better great. flavor. Excellent. The one that have conjugate your verb. I have, you have, and he she it. The one has. The Wait, one that has. Has with this, no? I think your microphone is. Did you yeah, say had or has? Has. Ah, okay. Continue. No, continue. Yeah. Yes, yes, yes. yes. Mm, 
and this coffee grow in a specific condition. Grow, so I grow, you grow. Grow uh -huh. in a specific condition. It needs. Um, it need. The, <laughs> need. I need, need. You need. I I said need. Ah, okay. okay. <laughs> yeah. Um, and a specific temperature. Mm -hmm. This is the between 18, 18 uh, to 21, I think. Mm -hmm. The grapes. Grapes. And um, it also needs, uh, because the, this or her, yeah, shape of the plant is the really. Seed. Uh, the seed. It is uh, delicate. It can be it can be freezed, freezed mm -hmm. or warm if the temperature is different between these degrees. So the plant is. What is the past participle for freeze? Frozen. Exactly. Yes. So it can get. It can get frozen. Yes. 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 Mm -hmm. yes. Great. Mm -hmm. That's it. So those are the conditions. Well, you 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 cover two questions. What is Arabica coffee and how it grows? Mm -hmm. Very good. Very very nice. What did Isra have, for example? You were going to mention something. <coughs> uh, well, in general, was the, the same information. The Arabic the Arabic coffee needs more specific condition to grow. Arabica, because Arabic Arabic. is the nationality for uh, for Arabic. Arabica, Arabica, mm -hmm. Arabica coffee needs more specific conditions to grow. Uh, different, different to Robusta. Mm -hmm. Robusta is another type of coffee, but the conditions to this crop is not uh, specific. Yeah. And yeah. The, uh, the crop mm -hmm. is more uh, easier. And the consumer is more common because with Robusta, a produce, with Robusta, we can produce a, a espresso. Exactly. Correct. No. Uh, products, uh, co coffee products more common. Switch the descriptions. A, common. Common products. Exactly. What kind of common products? A, a, for example, the American, the American, American or no? No, no, no examples. No examples. Your your sentence. What type of products do we do we produce? The common. Uh -huh. uh, what do I uh, The product. The common. The common products. Uh -huh. But the common products, but what uh, what what type of common products? You mentioned uh, you mentioned uh, something. With the robusta, we make we buy, we make uh -huh. different common products. Different common products uh, of what? Of coffee or exactly. coffee. Yes. Eliminate off and collocate your order of additives. Okay, so it's common different product. Common different switch. Different, different, different common products. Uh -huh, but what type of products? Plastic products? Well products? What is the the topic coffee yeah. coffee is an adjective too ah okay but i don't need oh so it's different common coffee products excellent that uh -huh. is correct that is correct very very good there you have it guys good Good, good, good. So you have an idea of what is going on in the video. I like what we are doing here. So I want you to please enter the link that you have in the chat and you are going to answer the questions that are underneath your name. Okay. 
and whenever I'm typing your name, check if you can edit the thing, go and position yourself below your name, okay? You are going to play the video while one person will um, uh, answer with me, okay? Here, I'm going to write a single sentence. Connie, Fer, Chucho, Sophie, Isra, and Doris, okay. And you are going to give me the literal read the question that was assigned to you and answer it literally. Okay, in the case of Ser, we're going to answer this one. Chucho, I want you to answer this one. Connie, I want you to answer this one. Sophie, I'm going to answer this one. Israel, you're going to answer this one, and Luis, you're going to answer this one, okay? While one person passes to the, to the class with me, answering their question, I want you to open the video by yourself and start listening to the answer. Find the answer to that question. Ready? Let's do this. So let's see number one, who's gonna pass? It's 7.40, Chucho, you're gonna start. Why me? <laughs> Why you? Because it's in 20 minutes, you're gonna leave to the school, so you have to start. Ready? Yes, sir. Excellent. Yes, yes. Okay, guys, with my guest, please start your your activity. Chucho, how did the US government take over the farmer's lands? Did you, do you remember anything about this? No, this is the only question that I could answer. <laughs> perfect, perfect, perfect. <laughs> <laughs> so let's start over here, attention. 50, the amount of land that can sustain coffee cultivation will be reduced by 50%. And it's not just cultivated coffee. Another study estimates that 60% of wild coffee species owned by peasants, indigenous people, and former slaves, many of whom were forced off their lands and subjected to brutal conditions. The plantations were profitable while prices were high, but in 1929 the U.S. economy crashed. Demand for coffee fell, and so did the price, bankrupting the plantations. Fearing that Colombia's entire coffee industry would vanish, the government stepped in. They purchased these large coffee fields from the owners. Many had more than a thousand hectares, about the size of 1,800 football fields. And they broke them up into small plots of about 16 hectares each before selling them to laborers. Yeah, the US government decided to purchase. The idea was that these small uh, Sorry, continue, continue. Again, again. The US government, USA government, decided to purchase the lands that mm -hmm. Colombian people had. Good, good, excellent. And then do what with them? They decided to divide it into 67 hectares. Okay, kind of like that. You're giving me random numbers. But okay, okay, <laughs> 67. But they decided to divide them, no? Exactly, yes. Okay. In hectares. And then um, I think it, it was to increase the production or the productivity, I don't know. Exactly, exactly. Uh -huh. And, and uh, there is a final process that you are forgetting. The last process there was also also mentioned. So let's go literal, okay? One, two, three, action. 
come up in a small plot and more than the government stepped in. They purchased these large coffee fields from the owners. Action. They purchased they purchase it. Mm -hmm. They purchase it. And then, and then I don't, I don't remember. <laughs> Before, don't worry, don't worry about then. Worry about this one. They purchased what? Purchased land. The land. Exactly, exactly. From who? The land from uh, farmers. The, What's the name uh, of a person who owns something? Owners. Exactly. Listen again. Would vanish. The government stepped in. They purchased these large coffee fields from the owners. Okay. They purchased it to their owners. Yes. To the owners, mm -mm. again, again. What if you purchased something? Uh, you purchase it from, a, you know, you use a connector of origin because the other person has the thing. Uh, the, the other person is the origin, and then it gives it to you. What is the, the, the contrary yes. for two? From. from so every time you use the word purchased or buy you need the connector uh -huh. from listen again okay. right coffee industry would vanish the government stepped in they purchased these large coffee fields from the owners from the from the owners exactly yes. that's right what did they purchase from the owners. You know, I really hate my short memory. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yes, you gotta you gotta pay more or train your short memory. Yes. Listen again. They purchased these large coffee fields from the owners. This large? Exactly. This large what? They purchased this large lens. Kinda. Similar to lab? Farm? No, no, no. The farm is different. What is the name of a football land? Build. In what type of fields are we talking about? Coffee field. Coffee fields. Listen again. Very large coffee fields from the owners. Porches. Coffee fields from the owners. Yes. Yes, but yes. you forgot. You forgot some information. What's the, the dimension of the coffee fields? Large. Large and which large coffee fields are we talking about? Large coffee fields. Now, which which large coffee fields are we talking about? There. Uh, opposite of those. This. Exactly. Complete idea. They, they purchase this large coffee. Built from the owners. Excellent. Second part. Okay. That created a boom in coffee producer. The former slaves. Stations were profitable while fell. Colombia's entire coffee industry would vanish. The government stepped in. They purchased these large coffee fields from the owners. Many had more than a thousand hectares, about the size of 1,800 football fields. Had more than one thousand hectares. Mm -hmm. One thousand what? Hectares. Excellent. 
effects. Mm -hmm. And then they give you a reference of how many are 1,000 uh, actors. Let's see again. The idea was that these small six and hectares, about the size of 1,800 football fields. About the size of about the size the seven field soccer no. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yes, but in uh, in America they don't play soccer. The other football, exactly football. football, football. Yes. Oh. American football. <laughs> well, if it's American <laughs> no. and you are you are American, you don't say American. Is like when you say Mexican tacos, you don't say Mexican. <laughs> yes, yes. Right. Uh, <laughs> size of about the size football of football fields. Exactly. And how many football fields? Sixty-seven. <laughs> Your random number. No, he never said 67. <laughs> no, I promise. He never said 67. Listen again. They purchased these large coffee fields from the owners. Many had more than a thousand hectares, about the size of 1800 football fields. 800? Exactly. 1800. This is too much. Exactly. 1800. Ah, that's much better. Yeah, because the other 80,000, the other was 80,000. That was too much. Got it? And then finally, saved one of Columbia's football fields, and they broke them up into small plots of about 16 hectares each. They brought. Oh no, no, no. They brought. They brought the, the riches. They brought their riches, I don't know. <laughs> okay, listen again. The size of 1800 football fields. And they broke them up into small plots of about 16 hectares each. Oh, no. um, you got distracted, right? No, 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 but this many. It's very fast. Many, yes. Mm -hmm. Okay, okay, in a moment. Uh, I will help you with that answer. Let's just uh, pass attendance, okay? Yes, yes, yes. We have Jesse. Jesse's in the class. Hello, yes. Hello. Good morning. Hi. So, I am going to take attendance. Yes, and please. Thank you. Connie? Here. Good morning. Yes. Good morning, Connie. Thank you. Ite? Absent. All right. Jesus? Present. Good morning. Hi, Jesus. Good morning. Thank you. Luis Alejandro. Alex is here. Yes, but he cannot speak. Oh, here, right. here, here, here. Oh, perfect. Thank you. Per here, Jesse. Yes, good morning. Thank you, Per. Sophie. Good morning, Jesse. Good morning, Sophie. Thank you. And Israel? Hi, good morning. Thank you. Good morning, Israel. Thank you. Thanks so to that's you, girl. All? That's all. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Have a good day. Perfect. Have a good day. Thank See you, you later. Mm. All right. So. So, goodbye. See you so, tomorrow. <laughs> you have five minutes. What is yes. the, this action? Uh, Broke. Exactly. Listen again. 
the size of 1,800 football fields, and they broke them up into small plots of about 16 hectares each. And then they broke them into they broke them into into small small into uh -huh. smaller smaller he says Perfect. smaller right this yes right it for okay no problem there is one board in your the vocabulary that speaks about a piece of land used for a particular purpose, for a particular purpose. A piece of land. A piece of land used for a particular purpose. Plot. Exactly. Which is when you are talking about the field or the, the large field can be broken into plots. Oh. You see, okay. that's agriculture vocabulary. Uh -huh. Right? Listen again. Well, we use more than after lands and supplying the US economy. The government. The idea was plots of about 60 hectares, about the size of 1800 football fields. And they broke them up into small plots of about 16 hectares each. Small plots about 16. No plots about sixty. Sixty something, no? Sixty or sixteen, I don't know. <laughs> okay, final um, repetition. About the size of eighteen hundred football fields. And they broke them up into small plots of about sixteen hectares each. Sixteen hectares. Each. Exactly. 16 hectares each. And there we go. Connect. There is a word that you're missing here. Broke them something into smaller plots, something about 16 hectares each. You can identify these words with only context. Okay? Let's start with this one. The easiest one. Smaller plots about about is similar to approximately. So what do you need? Yes. Here? Because about in this case is not a connector. About is a, a description. For about. Mm, close. For is for time. Oh no. <laughs> uh -huh. We are not talking about time. For, for, for. What is the connector for two nouns? A field, coffee. A Off. cup, aha, exactly. A smaller plot. Of about. Of about, exactly. Of about 16 hectares each. And the last one, broke them. This is a phrasal verb. What is the action? To break something into pieces, similar to the relationship. Um, of, I don't know. Mm, no, yeah, you know, Bro. When, when two girlfriend, girlfriend and boyfriend break. Remembers, uh, <laughs> broke <laughs> them, <laughs> broke them <laughs> off. <laughs> exactly. Listen again. To labor all fields. And they broke them up into small plots of about 16. Again, again. Listen. Yes. Did, did yes. you hear? And yes. they broke them? Break them. Broke them up. Yes. Exactly. And they broke them up. Ah, and there you have it, my boy. Excellent job, man. Very good. Yes. Thank you. This is your answer. Brother, you can go to the university. Yes. Okay. It's time Excellent to run. Practice. Time to run. Very good. Let's continue with the next one. Let's check who has progressed on the, the paper. Fair. Very good. Connie, excellent. 
Sophie, you're doing a good job. Okay, okay, okay. So let's go and check up what Fer did. Okay? Yes. Okay. Let's go with Fer. Two cold tea streaks and is used for high quality coffee. Both species require specific conditions to grow, but Arabica is particularly sensitive. Mm -hmm. The plant needs temperatures between 18 and 21 degrees Celsius. Too hot and the berries won't grow correctly. Too cold and they can freeze. It also needs a specific amount of rain, preferably... Close. What also needs has a specific amount of rain? The plant. It the plant. also? Exactly, it's only one. Correction. I know. Oh, it's not there. No. Mm -hmm. Here. Perfect. It also needs a, a specific amount of rain. Only with a three-month dry season, it can freeze. Three Celsius. Too hot, and the berries won't grow correctly. Too cold, and they can freeze. It also needs a specific amount of rain, preferably with a three-month dry season to flower. And crucially, it needs warm days and cool nights. So And crucially? Mm -hmm. And crucially? Right, right. Crucial. No. What grows best at a. Sorry. And crucially, something, no? Crucially. How do you spell crucially? Uh, I spell crucially. <laughs> no problem. If you imagine it, it's similar to Spanish. C R U S. Well, the S uh, instead of C. Uh, and then you use an I. Mm. Oh, no, yeah, it's a C. No, it's an S. It's an S. It's a Y? It's a Y. Uh -huh. Crucially. 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 Mm -hmm. Exactly. Okay. And crucially, and crucially something. I don't know. Mm -hmm. Okay, let's listen to it again. Latitude at a certain elevation and crucially it needs warm days and cool nights it needs warm days and cool nights exactly precisely but make it freeze it also needs a specific amount of rain preferably with a three-month dry season to flower and crucially it needs warm days and cool nights so it grows best at a certain elevation so it grows best, mm -hmm. best at a certain elevation. Excellent girl. Certain elevation. Very good. So read it complete. So you finish. One, two, three, action. Okay. So uh, both species requires a specific condition to grow, but Arabica is particularly sensitive. The plant needs temperatures between 18 and 21 degrees Celsius. Which one, which one, which one, which one? The plants or the plant? Uh, the plant. Exactly. So be careful because you wrote plants and needs. That can be considered a mistake in the certificate. Okay. Mm -hmm. So uh, the plant needs temperatures between 18 and 21 degrees Celsius. Mm -hmm. Too hot and the berries won't grow correctly to cool and they can freeze. Perfect. It also needs a specific amount of rain, preferably with a three months dry season to flower and crucially it needs warm days and cold nights so it grows best at a certain elevation. Days and cold nights. So it, what grows? So it what? Sorry. So it... Um, what are you? Mm -mm. Crucially, it needs so warm it, days. Uh, mm -hmm. it, it, it needs warm days and cold nights. So it grows best at a certain elevation. Exactly. Grows best at a certain elevation. That sounds excellent. Very good. Very, very good. Hard or easy? Um, easy, but for example, I thought it was talking about uh, plural plants, so I thought it was plants. Yeah, and they, 
Yeah. So I need exactly. to pay more attention. <laughs> it's about it's about matching the your short term memory with what are we talking about? Like the, the a good strategy for listening is never to lose the subject. If you identify the subject, you will all the rest of the words will make sense because if the subject is plural, then all the verbs need to be plural and all the context is plural. If the subject is singular, same way. So never lose your subject and all the listening will make sense. Okay. Got it? Very good, Fanny. Excellent job. Let's go then with Connie. What do you have, girl? All right. How did the Colombian government try to save the coffee industry? Let's go through the Fede Cafe. Yes. To support the industry in 1927, the government had created Fede Cafe, an agency that would organize and represent the farmers by negotiating fair prices and favorable deals with other countries. The most important one was in 1962, when Colombia signed the International Coffee Agreement with 69 other countries and set a price minimum for export. Nice. I nice. I read the number. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yes. But you used 72. Yes. I oh, okay. confused with the numbers. That's no problem, but there is something here. There is something here. Uh, let me just like that. They never said the most important. Oops. They never said part. Oh, okay. Can I send again? Yes, of course. Check it out. The government had created Feta Cafe, an agency that would organize and represent the farmers by negotiating fair prices and favorable deals with other countries. The most important one was in 1962. Oh. The most important one. Exactly. That's right. The most important one was in? Was exactly connected for years. In. in. Exactly. And in 1961, Columbia Saint International, something. 1927, the government had created and favorable deals with other countries. The most important one was in 1962, when Colombia signed the International Coffee Agreement with 69 other countries and set a price minimum for export. As coffee prices recovered, Colombia's smallholder coffee farmers started thriving. What did he say in this final part? Mm -mm -mm -mm. As the prices, uh -huh. uh, as the prices re recover, uh, uh -huh. the farmers started something. <laughs> the farmers started something, okay. <laughs> All right, let's listen again. Okay. As coffee prices recovered, As coffee prices recovered. Okay. Colombia's smallholder coffee farmers started thriving. Colombia for is Colombia holder coffee farmers. Okay, yes. We need to get order of adjectives. What goes first and what goes later? Holder is similar to owner, right? Mm, okay. Uh, What's what type of owners are we talking about? Mm, the owners that have a small piece of land. Exactly. So there are large holders and it's small. Small. You know, similar to owner. Oh, a small holder. Exactly. Yes. That that word can be considered only one. Oh, okay, good. Mm -hmm. Listen again. As coffee prices recovered, Colombia's small holder coffee farmers started thriving. Oh, as coffee prices recovered, Colombia's small holder coffee farmers started mm -hmm. thriving. 
Exactly. Write that down. Okay. As coffee prices recover, comma. Uh, Colombia small holder coffee farmers start driving. Small small holder coffee farmers. Uh huh. It started thriving. Do you remember what is thriving? Mm, I I don't remember, but I think that is. Something. Oh, oh, let me check in the vocabulary. Yeah, it is right there. Driving, driving, driving. Mm -hmm. I can't find it, but I think that is something that they started to recover. Yeah, but uh, did I put it? No, I cannot find it. Oh. Uh -huh. Yeah, we need, we need this word in the, in the vocabulary. Yes, this is in one vocabulary. Come on, teacher. Okay. Watch this. Thrive. Please read the definition. To become and continue to be successful, strong, healthy, etc. Yes, like they recover. Exactly. Exactly. They recover and they continue to be successful. Yes. All right. That's the one we are going to include in vocabulary number 43. All right. Okay. Very good, girl. Excellent job. Just add these words to one birth. Also, the word flower uh, that was in, in first uh, in first participation. The word flower is not flower; it is a birth. Is the action of flourishing to get fruits, right? This is also considered C1 vocabulary to flower something, flower as a verb. Okay. Good job. Good job. Good job. I like it. Let's go with the next one. So, Connie, you have it. What about Sophie? When did the current coffee crisis start? Oh, yeah. Okay. Let's begin. Over. This is one of the most changing weather patterns have made it hard to predict the life societies of around. Americans and Europeans were buying more and more coffee. We Americans know what we like, and we really do like coffee. Did I say like? Well, we... In what part of the video are, are you, so? In the one of the first one, when they explain that the climate change is affecting the plants. Oh. Uh, but uh, can you tell me the, the minute? Uh, yes. Mm -hmm. It's two fifty six. Can you repeat again? Two two fifty six. Two fifty six. Okay. Mm -hmm. El café. He incursionado en el café tostado. Yo lo proceso, lo tuesto, lo vendo tostado. Eso es todo un arte. Se volvió un arte. But the Zona Cafetera is also where climate change is already taking a toll. Greenhouse gas emissions have warmed the region by 1.2 degrees Celsius since 1980. That's enough to push the optimal elevation for coffee higher up the mountain, leaving the plants down here to overheat and produce lower quality beans. Mm. That's what's happening. Very nice, eh? Very nice. Okay. Uh, 
Very, very nice. Okay, okay, okay. So, did you read the vocabulary yesterday? Yeah. Okay, there is a word, an expression, that means the, the amount of damage or number of deaths caused by a war, by a disaster. The amount of deaths. No, I remember <laughs> damage and disaster, but I don't remember the word. Okay, 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 no problem. Let's go through the vocabulary and check vocabulary number 15. Mm, okay, tool. Aha. Tool, amount of damage I remember. You read that because a particular word. Okay, is the word that, that, uh, that is missing. Exactly. In this particular one, of course, toll as a literal meaning is about disasters, war, uh, injury. But there is an idiomatic expression, number 16, that says take a toll. Uh -huh. Take a toll is to have an, a bad effect on something, to cause a lot of damage. If we are talking about the deaths, not of people, but of plants, we can talk about a metaphoric toll. Okay, so we need the, the idiomatic expression. Precisely. You see? And, and toll, toll is, it refers to damage. Okay, yeah. You see? It's <laughs> the best time for people, in people. That's right. When you are talking about one day you read any document about the World War II and you will see the, the word toll repeatedly. Okay. The World War II left a toll of two million people. Things like okay. that. You see? Okay. Listen yeah. again. Confirmation. Mm -hmm. But the Zona Cafeteria is also where climate change is already taking a toll. The Zona Cafeteria is also, yeah, it's also where climate change is already taking a toll. There you have it. Correct it. Okay. Let's write that down. Um, teacher, I can hear the video. No, I'm not. I'm not playing the video. I'm correcting oh. what you wrote. Oh, yeah. Correcting on the on the document. Yeah, the document. Right. At all. You can add tall. Excellent. There you have it. Okay, taking that tall. Greenhouse gas emissions, and the second part is correct. The best in the world for over a century. Greenhouse gas emissions have warmed the region by 1.2 degrees Celsius since 1980. That idea is completely correct. Very good, Sophie. Greenhouse gas emissions have warmed, with past participle, the region in 1.2 Celsius. 1.2... Oh, okay, what type of degrees are we talking about? What is the opposite of Fahrenheit? Or Fahrenheit? Uh -huh. Opposite for Fahrenheit. What is Fahrenheit? Fahrenheit? Yes, Fahrenheit. <laughs> You're to, we're talking about oh, degrees yeah, temperature. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, Celsius? Exactly, yes. I think he mentioned Celsius degrees. Greenhouse gas emissions have warmed the region by 1.2 degrees Celsius since 1980. Um, Do you yeah. see that? Yeah. Let's complement that. Greenhouse gas emissions have warmed the region. Say no. Switch. Still. Switch. Switch. Celsius is like. No, I mean, okay. not the spelling. No. The words. It's not Celsius degrees. It's degrees Celsius. Okay. In English. We 
For Celsius in particular, we we say Celsius degrees first. Okay. Mm -hmm. Confirmation. Produce lower core coffee Celsius since greenhouse, greenhouse gas emissions have warmed the region by one point two degrees. Gas emissions Celsius have since... warmed mm -hmm. the region one point two degrees mm -hmm. Celsius since nineteen eighty. Excellent. And now there is something missing here. There is something missing here. I'm going to play it one last time to check if you can identify it. There is a word that we are missing. Okay. Do you remember the, the word chunks? Uh, mm -hmm. Right? There is a particular connector that we use when we are talking about temperature. Temperature and increase of temperature okay check it out okay it's 1980 that's enough to push have warmed the region by 1.2 degrees celsius since 1980 greenhouse gas emissions have warmed the region by 1.2 degrees celsius since 1980. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. 1980. but uh, you need a connector Onto no final repetition. Yeah. Emissions have warmed the region by one point two degrees. By exactly. When yeah. we are talking about increase or decrease of temperature, we are talking about an increase by an amount or by an amount. In the region, so it's going to have that mission that warm the region by you see? 1.2 degrees Celsius. Yeah. Co-locations. That's correct. Okay. Mm -hmm. That's enough to push the optimal elevation for coffee higher of the mountain. Grammatically, it's incorrect to say for coffee higher of the mountain. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> right? Because it's, mm -hmm. it was, it's not connecting anything. Okay. Right. So, what is necessary there? If you are mm -hmm. talking about elevation higher, in what direction are we going? Up, up. That's why you understood off. The phonetic sounds uh, similar to off. Okay. So instead of off, it's up. Exactly. Okay. That's enough to push the optimal elevation for coffee higher up the mountain. Up the mountain. mountain. Okay. Confirmation. That's enough to push to the optimal elevation for coffee higher up the mountain, leaving the plants here to overheat and produce lower quality beans. I'm not sure if it is beans is it's correct. It's correct because the coffee yeah. plant delivers beans, it doesn't deliver seeds. Okay. Mm -hmm. Finally, where would you put a comma in this idea? Mm. Uh, after mountain? Exactly. Perfect, Sophie. The comma is right here. Mountain comma, leaving the plants here. Over. Okay. Uh -huh. Very good. Your idea is complete. Okay. Great. What about Israel? Why countries fill the market with cheap coffee? It started at the end of the 80s when the coffee agreement fell all parts. Oh, okay. Okay, wait, wait, wait. Fail all parts doesn't doesn't make sense. This part. Yes, I'm trying to to identify the sounds because I confuse in this part when I listen. If you your sounds is correct are correct, right? So if you have the phonetics, now go to context, <laughs> right? Mm, we are talking about an agreement that broke down, that disappeared, that vanished, 
that was not available. What phrasal verb do you use to talk about something that disappears? It's not valid anymore. Breakdown. But it starts with fail. Uh -huh. Listen to this. You see? Uh, oh, Please read it. Okay, it's uh, to have so many problems that it is no longer possible to exist or function. Okay, the marriage finally fell apart. In other words, they got divorced. Exactly. Yes. This, the agreement that remain disappeared or the agreement fell apart. Exactly. You see? The word all parts doesn't make sense. Doesn't connect ah, with the context. Okay. okay. You see? Correction? So it's it started at the end of the eighties when the copy agreement fell apart. Corrected? Excellent. Well, it's a it's a only word, no, no really. No, it's a it's a phrasal verb. Yes. It's Aha, verb hello. and connector. <laughs> All right, let's listen again. In the early twentieth century, Americans and Europeans. Where are you? In what part of the B are you? Uh, they. 8.45 have increasingly flooded the market with cheap coffee. It sparked a crisis around 2009 when extreme weather and coffee people... It started in more country in the 80s when the coffee agreement fell apart along with the price minimum. Oh, okay. Along... Oh, okay, 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 okay. Good. So... The, the the agreement fell apart, uh -huh. right? But that was not the only thing that fell apart. Correct. Right? Something else fell apart together. What is a connector for company? Wait. Listen again. It started in the 1980s when the coffee agreement fell apart along with the price. Along with. Exactly. You can consider this a collocation, a, a chunk. The word along usually goes with a connector with. Uh, okay. okay, I was looking for along. I thought with off, but I off is a preposition, so it's not possible to get two preposition. No, I mean, with is a preposition too. Uh -huh. But along is an adverb. Okay. You know? And yes, you can get adverb and preposition together. Ah, uh, okay. No, I thought along is a preposition too. <laughs> some some adverbs, and this is something that we saw in the class. Adverbs and prepositions have very close connections. They're very similar. Okay, and that's the difficult part of, of adverbs. Um, yes, yes, yes. In the dictionary, we, uh, I found both a long exactly. preposition uh, as and a long as an adverb. Yeah. Because both give the direction in which something moves, the, 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 the way something is done. But the preposition gives you that information too. The difference is that the preposition connects. So in, in application, they are very, very similar, but you need to, to think about if you have two connectors together, it's very probable that one of them is not a preposition. One of them is giving you reference of the way move, the things move. Okay. Right? So along with the price, along is together with, and with is a connector, the price. 
What happened to the price? The price you know. down or the price. What is the opposite of maximum? Minimum. Exactly. It started in the 1980s when the coffee agreement fell apart along with the price minimum. The price minimum? Correct. Opposite of maximum? Ah, okay, 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 okay. With a Min minimum. Hey. With a with with mum at the end. Maybe mm -hmm. mum? Mum. With M. M? M? M. Maybe mum? Mm. Excellent. Because two things fell apart. Two things fell apart. The, the price didn't go down because the agreement went down. Uh -huh. So the price minimum started to go up. Okay, okay. You see? So it, it, all the things fell apart. So they started to fill the, the market with cheap coffee because the price minimum is very high. Okay, yeah, make the sense. You see? That's the reason. That was the thing. The rest was important too, but it's already time, right? At the end, the most important part is this section. When white countries fill the market with cheap coffee, this is the answer. Started at the end of the 80s, when the coffee agreement fell apart along with the price minimum. The agreement with who? With the cafe, coffee plantations, the, the one that Connie mentioned. What was Fede Cafe, right? Okay. This deal broke apart and the price minimum started to break apart. And there you have it, guys. What an interesting practice. Very, very interesting practice. Okay, I hope that you got more words together with you. Remember these chunks, okay? The words that usually go together are super important to remember because in case of writing, speaking, and listening, super important to have them in mind, okay? Okay. Right now we finished. Excellent practice. Yes, Sophie. Teacher, mm -hmm. can, can, can you repeat the, the word that, that it's not in the vocabulary, but you said with Connie, Connie exercise is three for three. Oh yeah, I included it. Uh, it was I... thrive. Okay. If you want to to check it out, number forty three, thrive. Okay. To become and continue to be successful. This small uh, coffee farmers and coffee smallholders continued having success thanks to the government agreement. Okay. So, okay, thank you. That's that's the one. Very good, guys. I'll see you tomorrow. Tomorrow we open a new topic. So everything is done perfectly. Very good, guys. Thank you. Thank you. Bye-bye. See you, guys. Bye. See you tomorrow. Bye-bye.